Each book has got an introductory section, and in book one, I show a range of scientists involved in scientific activities, and I challenge the students to think about what sort of scientist they might like to be. I follow this by looking at the different types of equipment that the students will use. I always found students like this when they first went into a science laboratory. Science Inquiry is divided into four sections and I support the text with pictures showing students engaged in each of those sections. I follow this by showing students how scientific inquiry develops over time. Book 2 covers stage 8 of the curriculum framework. I begin with the traditional approach of asking students what skills and knowledge they acquired in the previous year. Then I take them into the realms of creative thinking and give them an example of how their creative thoughts might flow when set a problem about the reflection of light. Book 3 covers stage 9 of the curriculum framework. Now the students are familiar with many science subjects and how inquiries are made, I challenge them to look for the signs of the scientist in themselves, using a timeline from infancy to adulthood. I follow this with case studies of three scientists from the past and present, which I hope the students will find inspirational. I begin each chapter with a checklist of topics that will be covered. The students can refer to this at any time. For example, they may use it when they are revising, using each entry in the list as a stimulus to help them remember what they have learnt. When I was using a textbook in class, I would let the students take turns to read aloud. This helped to keep them focused and to provide a variety of voice. When I did this, I would stop quite frequently to ask questions about what had been read, to develop their thinking skills. When writing my own textbooks, I kept this technique in mind so that other teachers could use it if they wished. Here you can see how the questions are spread over the pages. In this example, I have started by using a picture as a source for questions 1 and 2. And then, as the students read on, they can stop and answer questions 3 and 4. I would also stop and set a question for groups of students to discuss and then report back to the class. I have included these types of questions in boxes entitled For Discussion. When I began writing questions for the books, I used Bloom's Taxonomy as a guide to address critical thinking. I explain a little about this in the teacher's resource books, where there are suggestions on how you can frame your own questions to test all the skills such as comprehension, application and analysis. Questions which test the skills required for scientific inquiry are on a green background with the scientific inquiry icon, a magnifying glass. I used to include science stories in my class lessons. These will be about how discoveries were made relating to the history of science, or recent developments such as space exploration. The idea behind them was to show the students how the work that they were studying as part of the curriculum was related to science practised in the past and in the present, to show science as a human activity outside the classroom. I have adapted this approach in the textbooks by featuring items in yellow boxes. Here is one about possible alien life, and here is one about how ideas about light have developed over time. Each chapter ends with a chapter summary, in the form of list of important points to know. This can be used as a series of questions that the teacher could ask the class to check their knowledge. It can also be used to help in revision with the students checking themselves, then using the page references to check back to any points they are unsure of. After the summary are end of chapter questions, which bring together various topics discussed in the chapter.